ethos of Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, or Madame Blavatsky, is swirled in controversy and a certain read skepticism. To the reader who cannot handle inductive reasoning, I would say, run for the hills. However, that would go against the accepting nature of theosophy, so I will instead ask that the reader open up to a new way of thought. One doesn't become the leading esotericist of our time without a plethora of great ideas to balance the seeming loose ends. Some may argue that the phenomena that sparked Blavatsky's mystical nature occurred just after her birth. H.P. Blavatsky was born in her grandfather's Yekaterinoslav mansion on August 12, 1831. Her mother, Helena Andreevna von Hahn, was the daughter of a princess. Her father, Colonel Peter von Hahn, was a busy military man and was not present for her birth. Blavatsky was born prematurely, leading her family to believe that this puny, weak infant would not last long in a country plagued with disease. As a result, Blavatsky was baptized within 24 hours of being born. Among the relatives who attended the ceremony was Blavatsky's three-year-old aunt. Her aunt was holding a candle, and during the baptism ceremony, she clumsily managed to set the priest's robe on fire. He was engulfed in flames. Superstitious town folk saw this as a dark omen forecasting a life destined for turmoil for the ill infant. Russian superstitions say that these bizarre circumstances gave her the psychic powers, second sight, and power over sprites. They also said that she would be wise in the way of the witches. However, von Hahn would have none of the superstitious banter surrounding her child, and stood by her daughter as Wabatsky spent the first few months of her existence very close to death. HPV's mother was an aspiring novelist. She wrote novels criticizing the social positions imposed upon women in marriage. Critics have traced the beginning of the modern feminist movement to these works. Her father, however, took on more superficial interests. Horses, guns, and dinner parties. He was frequently absent due to his role in the military, which limited his influence on young Helena. In her youth, Helena was a warm-hearted, affectionate child with a thunderous temper. Her outbursts were rarely lasting, and she was never malicious or resentful. Her aristocratic family did take issue with her friendship tendencies. The first issue was with her preference of playmates from lower class families, threatening their high society reputation. The second was with Helena's growing infatuation with invisible beings, which were completely visible to her. Blavatsky viewed this as a special power. These invisible friends were absolutely real to her, and she found it quite frustrating when no one would acknowledge their existence. At age seven, as a result of her mother suffering from lung disease, the family was forced to move to Saratov to her grandfather's home so that her mother could seek treatment. She paid for Helena's education with her novels. At an early age, Helena had learned English, French, music, and dancing. While she absorbed her lessons, she took little interest in them. The family continued to move around a great deal in search of better treatments for von Hahn's worsening ailment. But in summer of 1842, she passed away, and an 11-year-old Helena was sent with her siblings to live in Saratov again. It was in the library of her grandparents' castle that she would begin studying mysticism a great deal. Spending hours a day reading books on mystical folklore and religion in the library of her grandfather's castle. Eventually, Blavatsky's interest in the occult would far outweigh that of her interest in formal learning and she would begin to frustrate her governess. In 1948, after a failed marriage at age 16, she finally abandoned her indulgent, high-society lifestyle and spent the next ten years on a journey for occult knowledge to learn and master the hidden powers found in nature and man, some of which she believed to possess herself. Blavatsky made her way through Greece, India, Mexico, Germany, South America, England, France, Egypt, Canada. She gained first-hand experience in witchcraft, sorcery, necromancy, and various forms of magic. She developed a further understanding of occultism and phenomena, which many believe built the foundation of her theosophical writing. However, Blavatsky would remain that she developed modern theosophy in Tibet, under the mystical guidance of a group called the Mahatmas, or the Ascended Masters. Of her masters, Blavatsky said, they have become perfected men and passed through the evolutionary stage of ordinary men. Some of them, instead of passing on to superhuman realms, elect to remain, for a time at least, on earth to help and inspire us along our spiritual journey. They are our elder brothers. 
Though in her major writings she would claim to have drawn from several Mahatmas, she seemed to work closest with Master Moria, or Master M. And while Blavatsky has given conflicting accounts of her first encounters with Master M, the most well-known story of origin stems from Blavatsky's youth. As a child, HPB spoke of a protective presence in the form of a Hindu in a white turban, claiming that he had saved her from injury on numerous occasions. Blavatsky claimed to have met her protector while walking alone in London. Master M approached her, insisting that she go to Tibet and receive private mystical training from he and two other masters. Moria had chosen her to start a new society, based on the ancient wisdom of the Mahatmas. Blavatsky accepted Master M's offer to study under the three adepts, and according to her personal accounts, her journey was tumultuous and plagued with illness, even suffering wounds as a member of Giuseppe Garibaldi's army in Italy. Blavatsky made several failed attempts to enter Tibet, but in 1864 she would finally make it through Egypt and Persia. During her elite training, the rest of the world would temporarily lose contact with her. According to legend, the Mahatmas taught HPB to harness her psychic abilities, allowing her to move furniture, ring bells, and force objects to appear at her desire. However, her occult training took a toll on her already poor health, as she was often in pain and suffered many terrible ailments throughout her lifetime. Equipped to begin her mission, HPB moved to New York in 1874, immediately getting involved with the spiritualist movement. The spiritualists believe that during a seance, it is the soul of a dead person reaching out to a medium to give a message to a loved one. Blavatsky's view differed. She believed that what the medium came in contact with were actually the psychic remains of a shell, formerly used to protect and conceal the immortal spirit before human death. Blavatsky hoped to convince spiritualists to integrate her philosophy of occult science, but went largely unaccepted by the spiritualists. Then one day, during a publicized two-medium materialization, she met an ex-medium and reporter named Henry S. Olcott, who had been investigating the phenomena. Blavatsky and Olcott immediately became friends, and she took him under her wing and taught him of the importance of occult philosophy in spiritualism. Through Olcott, Blavatsky would meet a second student, an attorney by the name of William Kwan Judge. Together, they received personal lessons in the occult from both Blavatsky and Master M. HPB's ideas became modern theosophy, and the Theosophical Society was formed in 1875. Olcott was the president, Blavatsky was the secretary, and Judge was counsel to the society. They committed themselves to investigating both spiritualistic and psychic phenomena. The goals of the society were, one, to form a nucleus of the universal brotherhood of humanity, without distinction of race, creed, sex, caste, or color. Two, to encourage the study of comparative religion, philosophy, and science. And three, to investigate the unexplained laws of nature and powers latent in man. Use of the term theosophy dates all the way back to the writings of Plato, standing for the universal striving for spiritual knowledge existing in all cultures. The word itself stems from the Greek word theosophia, literally meaning God wisdom. In her definitive work, The Secret Doctrine, Blavatsky describes theosophy as the root and trunk of the tree of which all religions are branches. Essentially, modern theosophy merges religious philosophy and metaphysics, holding that all religions are attempts by the spiritual hierarchy to help humanity evolve to greater perfection, concluding that each religion contains a portion of the truth. Theosophy borrows heavily from Buddhism and other Eastern thought in terms of universality and karma. Consciousness is believed to be both universal and individual, stating that nature does not operate by chance. Theosophists believe that everything living or non-living make up basic building blocks evolving towards consciousness. There is also a belief in an immortal, higher self found within all humans, which we are all unconscious of. Theosophists hold that humanity karmatically devolved into flesh from an ancient race of non-material, all-knowing beings as universal punishment for growing egoism. These pure spirit beings were the first of what Blavatsky called the seven root races. She believed that the fifth root race, the Aryans, 
were the closest descendants to the perfect spirit race. Occultist Guido von Liszt would later take her idea out of context and mix it with nationalism to develop the anti-Semitic ideology of Ariosophy. Sadly, the Nazi party would later adopt Ariosophical ideas, creating a not-so-direct line between Theosophy and Nazism. Theosophy also supports universal reincarnation, offering humans the